Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful February day. It's about 29 degrees. It snowed a little bit last night. And you might wonder why I'm holding Grace Kelly, this little doodle. Well, I've been out here for hours uh, trying to walk her till she'll potty, you know. And so she doesn't really like the cold weather. It snowed a little bit last night. She doesn't like the snow on her paws. She doesn't like the mud, you know. That's how these little doodles are. People get them. And then uh, during the winter time, like they just don't get out and get acclimated to the environment like they need to. And then when they come up here, the first few days, they're here they're like wait a minute you want me to go outside and do what <laughs> I don't think so so I ended up she got a little little, little cold so I ended up picking her up uh, but what we're going to talk about is kind of a, a, a related con a problem, and that's uh, dog zoomies. You know, people call me or email me all the time, and it's been, it's been cold outside. They're like, Stoney, my dog's going crazy. It's running around the house and being silly and tearing stuff up. And uh, it, it, it surprises me that people came up with a name for it, you know, and they call it the zoomies. Well, guys, there's, there's not really a name for it. It's not a condition, okay? It's just your dog's not getting enough exercise. And so this always brings up, I say, I'll tell somebody, I'll say, well, you're just not giving them enough exercise. And they'll say, oh, we, we have been doing lots of exercise. But the problem is, is that like your definition of enough exercise and the puppy's definition of enough exercise doesn't often match up. And it's especially hard nowadays because, uh, you know, people just don't do much nowadays. It's like, it's a big thing now to talk about how dogs, you know, how puppies, they can't exercise but a few minutes uh, a day or a few minutes at a time and you don't want to hurt their go growth plates and all that stuff guys that's that's really nonsense I mean think about this like if you you know if you went somewhere to a pediatrician or something and they told you oh your child shouldn't play soccer your child shouldn't play outside it shouldn't play baseball or football shouldn't wrestle well you would obviously know that pediatrician was crazy right well you go you know to the vet or you talk to people and they say oh well we can't let these little dogs exercise because they might uh, they might get too tired or they might over exercise and cause a problem. Well, the reality is that exercise reveals problems. Uh, it doesn't really cause them. I mean, minus the random, you know, traumatic event that might happen while you're out with your dog. Uh, exercise is good for a dog because mental and physical development is based on, uh, you know, adversity, based on stress. So, you know, a dog has a musculoskeletal system and has a mental system that when it's put under load, when it's put under stress, <laughs> <laughs> it will uh, it will react and adapt right adapt adaptation to the environmental demands okay so that's what we're going to talk about today uh, we're going to let a pup, bunch of dogs out and we're just going to kind of uh, let them exercise and I'm going to let you see what young dogs look like when they're exercising and when they're left to their own devices okay because we know I mean if you're exercising and you get tired what do you do okay well you stop exercising so we're just going to watch these dogs exercise and uh, you'll kind of see for yourself when they start to fall out you know, and that's the best way to judge your exercise programs is when you go out, if you get proper elimination and then you come into the house and the dog lays down and takes a nap, that was the right amount of exercise. Don't overthink it. Don't think in terms of minutes. Think in terms of common sense, guys. With this dog stuff, you have to run everything through a common sense filter, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so I went in and let out kind of a sample group of dogs ranging from about 15 weeks to about 10 years. And uh, we're just going to kind of walk around out here in the field and just let you, you know, just kind of let you like get a feel for how the dogs actually exercise when you leave them to their own devices. And what you'll see is like uh, certain breeds of dogs, uh, they, you know, they kind of exercise maybe more intensely in the beginning, but they, they fade out a little bit quicker. Some dogs have a, you know, a moderate level of energy output, but it lasts a lot longer, you know. Most of the time, kind of the general rule is this, uh, the younger dogs come out and they run around and they're real crazy, and then they kind of crash. Then the pubescent dogs, mid-pubescent dogs, the late pubescent dogs, uh, they're the big wrestlers and humpers and runner-arounders, and they have a lot of energy and a lot of endurance, and they do a lot of aggravating stuff. And then the older dogs, uh, they just kind of come out and they're like, yeah, I'm going to run around a little bit, uh, you know, but I've done that, I've been there, you know, so they'll, you'll watch them, they'll kind of peel off and do their own thing. Come on, come on. A lot. <clears throat> this is Helen. She's a big player. You look at these two doodle mixes here, right? Uh, they, uh, they're big players. And you see this kind of stuff, guys, and I want you to think about, see what's going on here? Look at the poodle and the doodle. And I'll kind of move out this way so the cameraman can get all these dogs in. Now this is me, I'm not trying to tell them what to do. I'm just letting you watch. And uh, we'll just show you an accelerated kind of time-lapsed version, how long it takes these dogs to get really calm and quiet. Hey dogs!
You're some good dogs. You're very good dogs. What are you doing, Cube? Oh, you're a good dog. And you're a good dog. I just kind of walk up the hill <laughs> and then I'm going to walk down the hill, you know. Uh, and I want you, while you're, while you're watching these dogs play, watching how much they're wrestling, how much they're sprinting, how much they're, uh, you know, spinning in circles and playing rough. And then I want you to compare that energy output to what goes on when you have your puppy on a leash and you just take a walk on a flat plane, like a sidewalk or uh, in a park field. You know, you see all this moving and running around, guys, you know? Just a couple of minutes of this wrestling and playing is like 30 or 40 minutes on a walk. And if you don't believe me, just go outside and, uh, you know, you take a 30 minute walk and see how tired you are. At the end of that 30 minute walk, do five 50 yard wind sprints. And then compare your total exertion level between the 30 minute walk and the five wind sprints and get back to me on which one made you more tired. Now this is another thing you'll see all the time. You see this dog, it's got a stick and it's, it's take off up through the hill. <clears throat> now we have all kinds of dog toys here, but this is what dogs like to play with. So <clears throat> went and got that stick and then paraded around like, look guys, look guys, look what I have to get the other dogs to chase them, you know. It's a natural dog game. So I just throw that down. They can get it and do whatever they want to do with it. Again, getting back to the idea of a common sense filter, you know, dogs have been playing with sticks for a super long time, and uh, <laughs> it's not the biggest issue in the world. You don't have to try to take your dog outside and hey, keep them from picking up sticks or keep them from eating a little bit of grass or wrestling around with the other dogs. You know, let them be dogs, let them play. I mean, look at what's going on here. Oh, same thing with kids. Like you see, like look, this is this little girl. She's gonna lay down here in the grass. And as a result of this, she's liable to get scratched. Uh, she's liable to get bitten a little bit, you know. But again, adversity is what builds character. You know, so if you wanna raise a child with character, let them get out in the world. Let them make some decisions. Let them win sometimes and let them fail sometimes. That's how they learn things. Look at these two guys. Now you'll notice like this American Bulldog, it's a big wrestler and this lab is a big wrestler. And uh, so they'll kind of buddy up, partner up out here. The ones that like to exercise the most uh, in their own way. So you'll get your wrestlers and they'll come and they'll wrestle mostly, right? Because this American Bulldog is not a great runner. <laughs> it's kind of blocky. And so it kind of runs a little ways and it just looks around at the other dogs like, hey, come back and wrestle with me, you know? And then some dogs like Weller, wherever Weller is, is a little Australian Shepherd Poodle mix. And all he likes to do is run and chase, you know, because he's real fast and he's real agile. And so that's what he likes the dogs to do. Another blocky dog, see this blocky lab here? Like, uh, she's a big wrestler. Watch, she's trying to, she's trying to chase Annie down. And, and Annie's like, I, I'm not sure about the wrestling part. How about you just chase me and uh, I'll play getaway. Now listen to them having that conflict right there. Again, that's something that they need to learn how to work out. Everybody's so afraid, you know, you go out, you hear a little bit of squabbling, like the, you act like it's a big deal. You know, and if there's not an age, a big age disparity or size disparity, or, you know, like don't, don't, don't worry about it so much. I mean, use common sense, right? It's like playing basketball, no blood, no foul. Still playing. This dog's starting to settle down just a little bit, but she's still got some jumping in her, still got some running in her. Call them to me, because they're all starting to move away where you can't see them. Hey, dogs! Come on, come on! Here comes Q. Now here comes a poodle. Look at this poodle run. <laughs> now you tell me, 
to, look at this guy run. Now, so people, you know, a lot of times they'll have a dog like a poodle and, and like they'll have them fixed with a nice fancy haircut. When they go out, especially in the winter time, they, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up his fancy haircut. I don't want him to get dirty. He's got all that hair. I don't want him bringing mud and stuff back in my house. But this dog, it loves to be dirty, you know? It loves to, to go out and explore. And uh, it's troublesome because, like, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's all kinds of stuff in this dog's coat that I've got to pick out every time that we go back inside. Oh, but listen, if you bought this kind of dog, then that's what you bought. I mean, don't, you know, don't punish the dog and don't exercise them just because they're a little bit of trouble to clean up. If you wanted a dog that was easy to clean up, you should have brought, you should have bought a lab. You should have bought a dog with a stock coat, you know. Here, dogs, here, dogs. Come on, come on. But look, see how they're all still going? Like on that recall there, you see how they're running with a lot of vigor? Like that tells you how much energy they have, you know? When you watch them, the bouncier they are, the more playful they are, like that's a good indicator of how much energy they have left. Uh, 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 uh. No. And this dog has enough energy to, uh, to, try to, to try to take Charlotte's mittens. You can't be doing that, nerd. more wrestling and play in there. Now you see who gets back to this wrestling. It's this bulldog, because the bulldog's good. But Weller's pretty scrappy little dog, and Weller's gonna hang in there a little bit. But as soon as that bulldog starts getting the better of it, you'll watch Weller, he'll take off running in a circle. <laughs> and then when the bulldog gets fatigued, Weller will come back and start picking on him again, you know? So that's pretty cool. Look over here, Helen, this doodle, and this poodle, it's super, like, look at him go. And do they bang into each other some? Yeah, you know, sometimes the, when they're playing, will they get a tooth hung in a flank or something, you end up with a cut? Of course, you know, but nobody said that uh, fun wasn't dangerous. You wanna have a little bit of fun, there's gonna be a little risk involved. That's just the way it works. Hey dogs, come on babies. Come on, come on. Good dogs. But still going pretty strong. Okay, you see them, see them all here still running and carrying on? Okay, as they start to get this out, then they'll gravitate over here towards me. And they'll say, hey, Stoney, is it, uh, is it class time now? And, uh, you know, I'll start to tell them yes, one at a time. But I can't, you know, I, I, I can't really teach them very well. Like, if they see all this energy? If I was trying to teach them something right now, and they have all this energy, well, it's going to be hard to focus, you know? It's like a big mistake they made with, uh, with, with school for children. It took away recess. Well, like, look, if you're a kid like me, who's wanted to be active, uh, wanted to be social, and you don't give me any outlet for that during the school day, well, I just make that outlet up for myself in class. And these dogs will do the same thing. You, you, you know, you take them out and you exercise them, and you want them to potty, you want them to come back in and do your training exercises, but like, they're maybe they're not ready yet. The only way to judge whether or not you got enough exercise is by the results. I tell this to people in my online journal all the time. Everybody underestimates how much exercise it takes to really help a dog mature properly, okay? And so that's what we're watching today, is I'm just letting you see, you know? This is what I'm talking about, I'm saying, you gotta be patient, you know? Oh, and you gotta be understanding because, oh, when they got a lot of energy, they also do things like this. Like see this lab puppy? She's kind of, you know, she's kind of uh, developed a habit when she was little of negative attention seeking. And so if she sees a kid, like she'll get that, that child's hat or she'll get their glove or their shoe and then she'll take off running with it. Kind of like the dog was doing with a stick earlier. It's a perfectly natural thing. Look, still running, still being crazy. Now, uh, one of the things that you'll probably notice too is that barking. Like you hear the, the, the poodles. Uh-uh. Hey, dude. The poodles. Anything with poodle in it, <laughs> it's going to bark a lot when you take it outside. Now, what you'll notice when you take your dogs out to exercise, especially in a big group, is the, a lot of energy that run around, then they take them a little break. Then they'll kind of get up and do some more exercises, but that, it won't last as long. Then they'll take them a little bit longer break. break. And then 
they'll do it again. And it, that kind of usually goes in like a cycle of about four or five times. What you'll see is they'll kind of come out and they'll settle down. And they'll get a second wind, they'll start again. And then a little while later, they'll settle in. And that settle in period will last a little longer. Then they'll get up and they'll start exercising again. About the third time it happens, usually, you know it's, it's you know, a perfect time to start in with your, like your manners training, your obedience training, or you maybe you're, you're gonna have company over at your house. And, and that's really important, guys. Like exercise is the primary way to control a dog uh, as, as it relates to their manners, as it relates to their ability to go into high distraction environments and, and uh, be calm and not be reactive. Here dogs, here dogs. And what I want you to notice here is like, see then when I called them, they came, but the come, it wasn't as springy. It wasn't as, as, as fast. It wasn't as much sprinting. You're starting to see these, uh, the way they're wrestling and, and, and running in circles, it's all starting to slow down a little bit. Now again, looky here, you see this mock combat? That's something that puppies need to be able to do, you know. They, they had them a little mock battle there, then they both calmed down, they decided to look at me, and I said, yeah, okay, that's cool. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate you playing and playing hard and doing what your instinct tells you to do, but keeping it under control. Again, getting back to the idea, no blood, no foul, you know. Make good choices when you're playing. I want you to play, I want you to play tough, you know. Uh-uh, cute, stop. I want you to play tough, but uh, I want you to keep it within the rules, you know, and not hurt your playmates. Q, that's enough. And like Q, he's a young male dog. It's a 10-year-old female dog. So like if he, if he was just humping and playing with another dog his age, I probably wouldn't interfere too much. But uh, this lady, she's old. She doesn't want to be, <laughs> she doesn't want to be jacked. All right, now go over here, cameraman, and you'll see that Charlotte's hat has been stolen by the lab. <laughs> hey, now see how that lab has that hat? It's like that lab literally took Charlotte's hat and uh, just started prancing around with it. Like, you can't catch me, you can't catch me, you know. <laughs> and so th that's, the, that's the kind of things that happens when a dog's full of energy. That doesn't mean you have to put up with it. You can fuss at the dog. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what it looks like to let dogs exercise until they start to self-regulate. When you go to train, filling out your training journal, you have to realize that like if you have multiple dogs, they're not going to tire out at the same pace always. Or, or if you've had dogs in the past, don't, you know, don't compare your dog that you have now to the dog that you had in the past. It's a different dog. So look, see what's going on? By starting to relax. <clears throat> this is a wild one. And this American Bulldog's a wild one. So they're taking a little bit longer. Taking a little bit longer to calm down. Let's see if I can back up so these dogs get over here where you can see them all. Now we got an old dog, super calm. Got a pretty old dog, super calm. This dog here is young, but like it's starting to calm down quickly because it's endurance level, just not a super high endurance level. Now over here we have a young dog with a super high endurance level. She's still going strong. And over there in the corner, we have two dogs that, uh, that, that uh, they'll play for a long time before they settle. But they all settle. Still some running, pretty fast comes. But notice how the overall energy level of the group is starting to, starting to get to where it's at a manageable level. This dog over here still got a little vestige of extra energy. So see, she comes over here, she's looking for the hat. She's looking for the mittens. You know, my dog, he's full of pee and vinegar. So he might grab a mitten if I let him. And these dogs are pretty rough players. And you might say, well, Stoney, how do I know, you know, how do I know if it's too rough or not? Dog training is an art, guys. It's, you know, it's not 100% it's not easy to tell, but basically what you look at is you see if both dogs are still willing participants. 
if one of the dogs is trying to withdraw and the other dog won't let it, or if there's some type of you know physical attribute disparity, well then you have to step in and you have to you know, like use again what I say is common sense. If you haven't been around a lot of dogs, then take your cues from the other people that are around that uh, exercise their dogs in groups on a regular basis. But look right here, you see how this, this bulldog has voluntarily taken this bottom position and this lab is coming over here and biting on its neck and biting on its hands and biting on its belly. Well, what's going on there, guys? Again, this is just mock combat. This, is, this comes from you know, a long line of, of uh, you know, <coughs> puppy tools that developed as a way to facilitate uh, rank order and to develop the skills needed if a dog you know matures uh, and and needs to be able to engage in actual physical combat so this is really good it teaches the dogs how to get along it teaches them how to settle conflicts uh, you know and also just to be honest with you it teaches them how to protect themselves if they are faced with a violent situation later on in life more wrestling over here Look at all this wrestling here. And here, I hope that the, that the microphone picks up this vocalization because that's another thing I get a lot of emails about is like, hey, Stoney, uh, you know, like my dog's growling or it's barking or it's being reactive or something like that. And, uh, and to be honest with you, a lot of that just comes from a uh, basic misunderstanding of dog vocalization patterns. Now see, so right there they got a little rough and one of them changed the vocalization pattern, snapped a little bit, and then they voluntarily separated. Back on up there a little bit, cameraman, I'll try to call these dogs into me again. Here dogs, come on, come on. Come on, babies. All right, get over here where you can kind of see the bigger group. Come on, come on. Now, starting to calm down, and I'm gonna start in saying, hey, I appreciate it. And what do I appreciate here? I just appreciate calm, attentive behavior, and I'm going to be able to get it, you know, uh, from most of these dogs. I've still got a couple over here. Look, still got a couple that are they're more into playing with each other than they are into playing with me right now. If I step in here and I say, no, no, you have to pay attention to me, well, then I'm going to be the one that interrupted the fun. That they're not going to look at that as says I'm a good guy. So I'm like, get your fill, you know, get your fill of running around. I got time. I got nothing but time. <laughs> And then as they settle, then I'm the guy that's got the good stuff. I've got the attention. I've got the balls. I've got the access to the treats. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on, come on. Good, good. Good dog, very nice. Good dogs, very nice. Appreciate that, appreciate it, appreciate it. Very nice. You're a good calm dog, and you're a good calm dog, and you're a good, oh, you're not being very calm. Oh, what about you? Are you a calm dog? Very nice. Look over here, look at Helen. Helen's like, I'm not quite ready to be calm yet. So I'm like, okay.
Oh, uh -huh, very nice. Oh, and you're a nice bulldog. And you're a nice poodle. Oh, and you're nice. Don't be biting me. What do you think, Charlotte? Are they calming down? So we have two wrestlers left. For the most part, the wrestling has kind of died down, stopped pretty much. The chasing has pretty much died down and stopped. We're going to get a few flashes of it. Okay. These guys here. You watch this old bulldog. Uh uh, Q. This old bulldog, he'll be one of the last ones to give up. So yeah, they're settling. Still getting a little, little wrestling over here. Now they voluntarily separated. Now you see this young dog going over here, fussing with this older dog. The vocalization pattern was different. You see he fussed a little bit more seriously. Now she's trying to lick him, kind of suck up to him. Those are valuable lessons for dogs to learn. Now Weller, who's a really active dog, he's went and found him a stick. He's gonna kind of chew on that stick. Now earlier, if he would have gotten that stick, first thing he would have done was showed the other dogs and then took off running with it. A couple of the dogs have run up to the kennel. They're just kind of uh, up there relaxing, getting them a drink. Back up a little bit there. Watch out. Watch those dogs behind you, cameraman. And you'll see the bulldog and back up there and show them right here. Look, the bulldog and the golden doodle still wanting to wrestle. This young pubescent male, you know what he's wanting to do. <laughs> Which I can't blame him. I remember being young. Go on, though. Right? And let's see just how long these, these dogs are going to hold out on the, on the wrestling. Calm, that's everybody's calm. Is that bulldog gonna go back? A little wrestling, maybe not. These guys up here in the corner. Just kind of doing a little grooming, a little, little, little playing, a little lovey doving. They guys come over here, check out the old man. Weller gets into the action for a second. All right. Okay, cameraman, so back on up and show them pretty much everybody. Okay, and uh, like I said, I'm going to go through the video and I'm going to try to speed up uh, a lot of those parts because, uh, you know, I realize you'll get, uh, you'll kind of get tired of watching the same thing over and over again. But um, I just made this video to kind of give you guys a metric by which to judge your own exercise regimen at home, okay? So I just brought these dogs up. Now, these dogs have already been exercised once today. Uh, we had just put them up for about an hour and a half or two hours, let them take a little power nap, and brought them back. And that's about how long it takes for them to self-regulate. And uh, you saw that the, some of the dogs takes a little longer than others, okay? 
Um, that's the point of keeping a journal. If you keep a training journal, then uh, what you can kind of do is you can track the success of your outings. And when you have a big outing like the ones we take, you come in, you write down where you went, how long you were gone, what did you do while you were there, and what was the effect on the dog when you got back. Okay, and then take that journal and anytime somebody tries to tell you, they try to push this propaganda on you that exercise isn't good for a puppy, then show them your journal, you know. And uh, the fun thing is you'll be able to show them your journal while your dog sits beside you and acts like it's got some sense, right? Because a tired dog is a good dog.